So today we're going to work on a Caterpillar D311 power unit. I picked this engine up a year and a half ago and the only thing I did to it was check it for spark and there was no rotor in the magneto on the pony engine. At the time, a rotor was extremely hard to find. And I ended up coming across a complete magneto on eBay that had a bunch of new parts inside of it. So I bought that. Let's get this thing uncovered and we'll see if we can get it running today. So this sat on a trailer for over a year. See down here in the front there's a belt drive on the PTO. This probably powered like a sawmill or something like that. Let's take a closer look. So this is a little four-cylinder diesel. There's the serial number, 7S7396, model D311, 37 horsepower. So let's go over this thing real quick. I don't know anything about it. nine nine four six little hour meter so the way these work is you got a two-cylinder gas engine and this is your starting motor for the diesel there's no electric start sometimes the ponies have electric start this one does not so what you would do is you'd fire the engine up this is your decompression for the diesel. You push, this is your clutch, this is your Bendix or your pinion. So you'd push back on the clutch a little bit, engage your pinion, that would stay engaged, that'll latch in. Then you engage your clutch for the pony. Now what this does, it'll start turning the diesel over. You're building oil pressure, you're building fuel pressure. You're heating the intake air because the exhaust runs from the pony through the intake. This would normally face up. Remove the compression release. Now you're cranking over under full compression. You're building heat in all the cylinders. All while heating the intake air and heating the coolant. So once you've cranked over for a little bit, go and you you would give a fuel once you give a fuel it should fire up this will automatically kick the clutch out click kick the pinion out and then you idle down your pony and shut the fuel off you don't ever shut the pony off with the mag switch you shut it off by running it out of fuel so over here on the other side you can see a uh, set of gauges this is your fuel pressure and then your oil pressure
Now also on a Caterpillar, you check the diesel oil while it's running. Obviously you want to make sure there's oil in it. So we've got, looks like good oil, looks clean. Let's see if you guys can make it out. It says check with engine running and then we have our full and low mark. Sometimes there's a mark for when it's not running. You at least want to check, make sure there's oil in it before you start it, but then once it's st running, you check the oil. Now right here, this is the oil for the pony. Don't look the best. This you can check with it off. We're over full. I think we'll drain this. And put some fresh oil in it. Now either cylinder has these little valves on the bottom. Sometimes you'll get fuel down here, oil, like we're getting right now. So this is to drain any fluid that gets in the cylinders. They're horizontal, so sometimes liquid gets past the rings and stuff. So we're missing our pony fuel tank. That's gone. This is our governor for the pony. Seems like that could use some alignment. It looks to be a little bit out. We've got an oil bath air cleaner for the Pony, and there should be one for the diesel, but that appears to be gone. Here's our breather, and this is our oil filter. And both these cylinders have quite a bit of oil in them. This is our fuel transfer pump. This is our filter housing. And then here's the injection pump. So you gotta check the oil in this. Injection pump, that's something that people overlook. And then we've also got oil down here in this housing. All right, let's get this pony oil drained. Oh yeah. Get all that water? Great. We'll let that drain for a little bit. Now it looks like we've got a drain plug right there on the side of the pan. There's also a large plug on the very bottom. But I think I want to go after that one. See right there's the large drain plug on the very bottom of the pan. And right here is where that other plug is. So, all we're doing is checking for water. That should be adequate. It'd be easier to get this bracket out of our way. <laughs> See if we get any water out of the diesel. And we are. Not good. Of 
quite a bit. Wow. Well, hopefully we have uh, some good luck like with this one like we did the the Hercules. If you guys haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out. Try to get some oil. I wasn't expecting this. We got another stuck engine. If we look up in the valve cover, it looks pretty good. Guess maybe we'll see if we can pull these injectors out. Maybe get some, some goo down in there. So I started pulling the delivery valves out of the engine, undoing the lines. Then undo the nut, and then sometimes I can pull it out by hand or just put the line back on it and give it a little pull. I don't think that's supposed to be loose like that. <laughs> I'll have to get the bore scope out and look in the cylinders. So I'm going to try putting some of this rust release in there and seeing if uh, that'll help us out a bit. I guess we'll let that sit and see what happens. So I pulled this cover on the flywheel housing. I was hoping this tool I had made to to break engines free out of an old starter was going to fit here, but the the hole's just a little bit different. So right now I put a put a bar on the ring gear. And we got a little bit of movement. So I'm hopeful. Watch this pipe wrench as I wiggle this.
I moved the pipe wrench over to the PTO and let's see if we can make a full revolution. Whoa! So I got a piece of eighth inch air tubing and I just did the Venturi thing where you blow past the end of it with uh, with a blow gun So I'm using that to try to suck back all this rust release While that's doing its thing. I'm gonna put some oil back in the pony Take the cover off the mag. So if you look right between the contacts, you'll see a spark. Now I got this other mag. Let's see if we can rob our rotor out of it. That looks like a brand new cap also. See the inside of this thing looks pretty good. There's what we needed. Should probably swap this whole mag, but Mm -hmm. There's two. Oh, we had a pop. Gotta find that happy place. getting enough fuel. Pop the top of the carb off. And so we found this jet here clogged up in the bottom of the carb.
one runs. See if we can keep barring over the the engine, make a full revolution. We went 360. Putting a little bit of oil in all the cylinders. It had oil pressure because we just made a hell of a mess. Stick these nozzles back in. And leave all the lines loose up top. I don't have the cat wrench to open the little bleeders. I think I could put this valve cover back on. It does need a new gasket. We're going to ignore that for right now. I think we'll check the top of this filter housing for fuel. Make sure there's filters in it. So it's just got those three socks. We're gonna need new gaskets for that.
gonna leak. But... I should have checked it, but all our pumps here were stuck. Now we got that free and these are all free. So now, I think we can try it again.
So we need a few minor things, a couple gaskets, and an air cleaner, and a fuel tank. But we should be in pretty good shape. So that engine was bought for this Inslee shovel. A D311 was a factory option. This has a Buda gas engine in it. The cat would probably be a little bit nicer to run.